In today's video, we will talk all about Chainlink. Chainlink is one of the oldest and most recognized cryptocurrency projects. It consistently ranks in the top 25 cryptos for the past six years, but it rarely breaks into the top 10 even during its bull market peak. Today, we are diving deep into everything for Chainlink from its past, its present, and its future roadmap, and I will give you the reason why I think Chainlink will have its biggest bull run yet in the upcoming cycle in 2025. Welcome back to the Virtual Bacon channel. My name is Dennis. I'm a crypto angel investor for the past five years, and I have invested in over 100 crypto companies. On this channel, I share my views on market trends and investing strategy to build wealth in crypto. First, let's cover a brief background of Chainlink's history being the de facto Oracle provider for blockchain application. Chainlink's tagline is connecting the world to blockchain chains. Their original vision was being the decentralized blockchain oracle. A decentralized oracle plays a pivotal role in connecting smart contracts to real world data. This was a huge deal in early days of DeFi summer in 2020 because all of the early DeFi applications needed a way to read uh, traditional world data and price data and bring them on chain in order to process them for DeFi application. These include asset prices for traditional finance, for real estate, uh, precious metals, commodities, equities, or generating randomness for gaming, uh, IoT sensors for supply chain, ID verifications, etc. Of course, you can use a centralized data provider for these data sources, but this defeats the purpose of decentralized application. This is why Chainlink's decentralized node providers was so important. They act as this trustless layer of data source access for the smart contracts. One of the biggest use cases of Chainlink is their data feeds uh, and price oracles. Most DeFi protocols out there use Chainlink oracles today, such as lending and borrowing protocols like Aave and Compound, mirrored asset protocols like Synthetix, stable coins such as Liquidity, Fade, TrueUSD, asset management protocols like Set Protocols, Next and Mutual, which is an insurance protocol, options and futures like Ribbon and Talis all use Chainlink in order to function. Chainlink Oracles also has a large variety of price fees, not only for Ethereum and Bitcoin or other cryptos, but also for gold and for uh, Forex, for commodities, etc. Uh, a total of 718 price feeds available. And these price feeds are available on most of the blockchains out there. Chainlink also claims to have over 1,000 total Oracle networks. I don't believe this is actual number of blockchains integrating with Chainlink, but rather uh, this is referring to the total number of cryptocurrency projects, including decentralized applications and blockchain infrastructure that integrate with Chainlink. Nonetheless, this is a very impressive achievement. Another major achievement of Chainlink in DeFi summer is with the link tokens adoption in yield farming protocols and lending and borrowing applications. You can track this on DeFi Llama by going to the pools tab and searching for specific tokens. Here you can find where the token is utilized across all of the DeFi protocols and ecosystems. And here you can see Ethereum is widely adopted with large amounts of TVL in the billions and hundreds of millions, of course. Another popular DeFi token is Arbitrum. Uh, their Arbitrum native token is widely adopted across multiple pools and protocols, but you see that it's only widely adopted on the Arbitrum chain. So this token is somewhat political and it's not widely accepted on multiple chains. And this is where Chainlink really shines because the Link token is one of the top uh, ERC-20 tokens that's widely adopted across many, many different chains and many different protocols and different yield farming pools. Here you can see the Link token is widely used on Arbitrum, Ethereum, Avalanche, uh, Polygon, even BSC and Optimism, they all integrate Link token in their DeFi protocols. This is one of the most unique features of the Link token that sets it apart from all other assets. It's non-political, unlike BNB, Arbitrum, Optimism, or Polygon, whatever. Wherever there is DeFi on any Ethereum-based ecosystem, there is the Link token. Now, moving on from DeFi and the Oracle stuff, which were really popular in 2020 and 2021, Today, however, Chainlink is much more than just an Oracle and data provider. In the next bull run, Chainlink is aiming to become the irreplaceable middleware layer for any application developer to access the Ethereum technology stack. First, let's cover Chainlink's CCIP or Cross-Chain Interoperability Protocol. This is a protocol built on top of Chainlink's existing validator nodes that aims to connect all existing blockchains with each other. This design is very different from the Polkadot or Cosmos model where you have a somewhat closed ecosystem. On Polkadot, in order to be interoperable with other chains, you have to become either a pair chain or a pair thread, but you are all within the Polkadot relay chain ecosystem. 
And on Cosmos, you do have this interoperability stack called the IBC, which does make different blockchains uh, easier to communicate with each other. However, this is only a technology standard and it's still up to the individual blockchains to create a connecting bridges in order to pass messages between each other. This is why it's still lacking a generic messaging layer that connects all existing blockchains. For Chainlink CCIP, you don't need to commit to join Chainlink's uh, proprietary network. Instead, it just works to connect all existing blockchains. And this protocol not only serves token transfers, but also arbitrary message passing. This means you can use CCIP to send arbitrary data from one blockchain to another, which enables the creation of native cross-chain smart contracts. Imagine for a DeFi application where you can keep your collateral on Ethereum for the high security, but still take advantage of higher yields on Solana or Avalanche. This is what Chainlink CCIP is able to unlock. The only two competitors to Chainlink CCIP is Layer 0 and Axelar. I have also made an in-depth video on Chainlink CCIP and you can check that out on the channel. Now, one of the strongest areas that Chainlink is gaining adoption is with tokenization and RWA or real world assets. This is where traditional finance and enterprise players are tokenizing their money markets and existing assets on either private blockchains or public Ethereum to enable 24 seven operation and reduce their cost and friction. We have already seen Chainlink test this integration in partnership with Swift and 10 major banks in order to tokenize their assets and move them across multiple private and public blockchains. These banks include New Zealand Banking Group, BNY Mellon, BNP Paribas, Citi, Clearstream, Euroclear, etc. And here you see the scope in depth. Swift is the main technology provider that connects to the banks. And then Swift talks to Chainlink CCIP in order to move these assets across not only the public Ethereum blockchain, but also other public blockchains that they want to experiment with, such as Avalanche, but also private blockchains such as Quorum, which is a private Ethereum client. This ability to connect public Ethereum with their private blockchains for the enterprises is super important because the traditional finance players like JP Morgan City and Franklin Templeton would not want to make everything completely decentralized. You see, in their latest test, rather than using an open network like Ethereum, Citi and JP Morgan use a private version of the blockchain. JP Morgan and BlackRock have also tested tokenizing the BlackRock shares as collateral, but this is also being done using a private version of Ethereum called Onyx, which is built by JP Morgan. While we know that BlackRock and all these traditional finance players really like RWA and tokenization of their existing assets using the blockchain, I don't believe they will fully embrace a decentralized future and just plug these directly into Ethereum mainnet into DeFi applications. Instead, they will want a hybrid solution that is uh, frictionless enough, but also something that they can control. This is why Chainlink's CCIP and all of the other automation and compute functions that we'll cover in a bit is so crucial to get this done and bring the enterprise adoption from the traditional finance world to the world of Ethereum and Web3. To learn more about how Chainlink is an integral player in the tokenization and RWA narrative in DeFi, I have also made a full in-depth video that you can check out on our channel or with the link in the description. The tokenization and RWA asset class is projected to reach $16 trillion in the next 10 years. So this is definitely one area that has long-term potential. Now let's summarize Chainlink's new technology solutions and how they differ from the old Oracle providers. First, we have data feeds. This is the Oracle providers that have existed since DeFi summer 2020. This is the original Oracle solution, mainly to power lending and borrowing, stable coins, or derivative protocols. However, one major limitation is that data fees is a push-based Oracle, which means the data is only updated at predefined intervals. This works for passive DeFi applications, but does not scale to high demand and high frequency use cases. This is where the new Chainlink data streams comes in, which is a pull-based Oracle that provides on-demand data that can be accessed at any time from the smart contracts, meaning the DeFi applications can request new data whenever they are needed. Data streams can provide constant live updates of off-chain data to the smart contracts, which is crucial in maintaining high-frequency applications, such as a perpetual exchanges that is trading 24-7 instantly multiple times per second. Another major part of Chainlink is their VRF provider, which stands for Verifiable Random Function. 
this is a on-chain randomness generator. Essentially, it provides a fair way for smart contracts to generate random outcomes. The most obvious use case for this is with on-chain casinos. In order for any on-chain casino game to be provably fair and decentralized, it has to use a solution like Chainlink VRF. Lastly, we have Chainlink Automation and Chainlink Functions. These two solutions are a huge breakthrough that changes the way smart contracts connect with the traditional Web2 world. Unlike data feeds and data streams, which only focus on passing data for smart contracts to use, with automations and functions, traditional Web2 developers can build trustless applications that combine both Ethereum smart contracts and the traditional cloud applications. This works in two ways. First, Chainlink automation allows any Web2 developer to manage their smart contracts and use them as a traditional API without having to understand the full wallet infrastructure or Ethereum node. Any Web2 developer can set certain time and conditions for their smart contracts to execute, and Chainlink handles the rest. Chainlink functions, on the other hand, connects smart contracts to Web2 APIs. So if you have a super intensive AI compute job that needs to be done on AWS and cannot work on Ethereum, you can still integrate these features by using Chainlink and connecting your decentralized application to the AI compute APIs on AWS without having to build your own centralized off-chain middleware. This way you can perform custom computation that is somewhat off-chain, but still have them be utilized on-chain in your decentralized application. While Ethereum smart contracts are powerful being so decentralized and transparent, they are still somewhat limited without the Web2 compute parts. I imagine Chainlink automation and Chainlink functions will be the two crucial parts that really brings enterprise adoption to Ethereum. Next, let's talk about Chainlink staking and the Link Tokenomics 2.0. I know what you're thinking. Staking is nothing new. You stake some Link tokens and you get some of the Link token inflation coming from the supply, right? Yes, some of the early rewards do come from inflation, but there is also a significant fee sharing part that comes from Chainlink adoption. Let's break down the full token utility for Chainlink in the next cycle. There are three main areas that the Link token accrues value. First is with usage-based payments. This is a model where uh, users pay for Oracle services based on their usage using the Link token. For example, when using Chainlink's VRF automation or functions solutions, the application developers need to purchase Link tokens and pay them on-chain like a on-chain subscription, and these tokens are consumed and paid to the node providers. This payment model already existed since DeFi summer, and it has always been used to power the Oracle network. But the two other tokenomics upgrades is what's really interesting. The number two is user fee sharing. This is an approach where applications share a portion of their generated fees with Chainlink's service providers as a way to pay for the Oracle services they consume. The most direct example is here. The first fee sharing proposal recently passed between Chainlink and the large decentralized exchange GMX, where 1.2% of the total protocol fees earned by GMX v2 and its future versions will be paid to Chainlink service providers in exchange for the usage of the low latency oracles and their technical support from Chainlink. So instead of using the Link token just like a currency that the providers still have to cash out from, while well, the Link stakers and their node providers will be directly receiving cash payments from GMX protocol based on its trading fee revenue. This is a much more sustainable model for long-term income for Link token holders. Lastly, there's the Chainlink Build program, which is an initiative that supports early stage startups using the Chainlink services. You might have heard of this program already, which many crypto projects have joined, that kind of looks like an accelerator program at face level. But there's one key point that is super bullish for Link Token. Take a look at this. In exchange for providing enhanced access to Chainlink services and technical support, these projects are committing a portion of their native token supply often between 3 to 7% to be paid to Chainlink service providers, including stakers. This means by staking Link tokens or becoming a node provider, you will be receiving native tokens from all of these top crypto startups that go into this program. Some of the projects you might recognize, for example, Trueflation is in this program, and they will be committing approximately 4% of the Trueflation token supply over time to pay to Chainlink service providers and stakers. Another example here, Blueberry is committing 3.5% of their total supply to the Chainlink service providers. 
here we have Dolomite, which is also committing 3% of their total supply to Chainlink. So there is a real upside for Chainlink token holders in this accelerator program. You will be receiving tons of other new project tokens by staking Link token itself, which is a super good part for Link token holders. Aside from token utility, we also need to cover the token distribution and how much is controlled by the insiders versus how much is circulating. In the original ICO of Chainlink, 35% of the tokens were sold to the public. Another 35% were kept for node operators. The last 30% goes to the company for development. Now, over time, a lot more tokens have come onto the market. Today, 55% of the total supply is circulating. Now, because the Chainlink token exists on Ethereum mainnet, you can verify all of the supply on Etherscan. Here you can see all the top token holders for Link. And number one is Binance. Uh, Interestingly, we'll get into this in a bit, but you see here, there are a ton of these non-circulating supply, which are locked tokens that you can track directly. There are 12 locked wallets with 30 million tokens each. So that's 360 million tokens. There are three more wallets here, 23 and 22 million, one for 10.5 million, and another non-circulating supply one with 3 million. These wallets sum up to 84.5 million. So 84.5 million plus 360 million, we have 444.5 million tokens locked that we can track on chain. This is exactly how the calculation here is done. And 1 billion minus 444.5, pretty much exactly correct, uh, matches the CoinGecko terms directly. Here is the exact token release schedule for the next two years for Chainlink. Specifically, in the 12 month period from Q2 2023 through the end of Q1 2024, 7% of the total supply of Link is expected to be released into the circulating supply. It is anticipated that subsequent 12 month periods will see similar release rate amounts, but this is subject to change based on external factors. So the token release rate is 7% of the total supply per year, or 70 million tokens per year. We can also verify this on chain by checking on Etherscan. Let's go to this non circulating supply 15, which is the latest tranche being unlocked. You see this wallet received tokens from the node operator section of the total supply. Then it started distributing tokens every three months to these two other wallets. Now this first wallet here is a smart contract. And if we click into that and follow the trails here, you see this is clearly a node operator rewards program. It's distributing tokens across many, many different wallets, small amounts regularly every day. Some of these wallets are also known node operator wallets. So this is for sure a node operator rewards program. However, there is one major question I have for these distributions, which is these other tranches. You see the node operator rewards are like 3 million tokens per every three months from this wallet. However, another 7 million tokens are distributed at the same time and check this wallet out. This wallet is a Binance deposit wallet and you see all the funds coming in are transferred over to Binance for deposit. This will explain why the largest token holder for Chainlink is on Binance. But why is this happening? If the tokens are supposed to be meant for node operators coming from that tranche, why is it being deposited to Binance at a larger scale than to node operators? Are these actually team tokens being released? I don't know and I couldn't find the answer. This also matches the token release that they have stated with 7% of the total supply being released every year. Let's do a quick math. If we take the 70 million tokens being released per year divided by the current supply of 556 million million tokens, that gives us 12.6% of token inflation from now for the next year. However, when you look at the staking rewards for Link, the reward rate is only 4.75% per year. So where is the other 7.5% of token inflation going to? This kind of explains the ether scan discrepancies I see with the node operator rewards and the ones going to Binance. Perhaps there is a pretty significant token unlock happening every month and a minor chunk of that is going to token stakers and node providers, whereas a larger chunk is going to team tokens. I don't have any way to prove this. There is no official documentation. This is just what I speculate. Now, to be fair, this is totally fine. The team tokens are there to be distributed to the teams. We just want a little bit more transparency as to how much tokens is going to the team versus how much tokens going to staking and node providers per month. And the overall release of 7% of the total supply per year is not that high, much lower than majority of the newer projects coming onto the market. So all in all, this is fine. 
Just want some more clarity on this. Okay, finally, let me give you my price prediction for Chainlink by the 2025 bull run peak. First, we need to figure out the supply of Chainlink by the end of 2025. Since we know the exact inflation number, this is easy to do. Let's take 70 million tokens per year divided by 12, which gives us 5.83 million tokens released per month. Then times that by 26 months until the end of 2025, which gives us 151 million tokens to be released until the end of 2025. We add this number on top of the current supply of 556 million. That gives us a supply of 707 million tokens by the end of 2025. Now let's find the market cap target for Chainlink. I believe Chainlink should become a top 10 coin in the next cycle. My reasoning is this. The 2020 and 2021 cycle is so driven by infrastructure and layer one, and layer two blockchains. A lot of these layer ones seemed big and claimed to kill Ethereum and they even even ballooned to hundreds of billions of dollars in market cap. However, the next crypto cycle is most likely driven by real adoption and applications, which protocols can actually onboard real users and real application developers to the world of blockchain. I don't think it'll happen on layer ones anymore. That narrative has passed and it's dominated by Ethereum. Even for layer twos, while they are very needed for the scalability, the competition is very fierce. We have at least five layer two projects with hundreds of millions of funding, all trying to compete for the uh, killer apps to come on uh, to their network in order to adopt Ethereum. However, when it comes to the middleware layer, the automation and the data provider layer, Chainlink really is second to none. They have a six year long moat now with their nodes network that they have slowly built up, which no one else can challenge now for their decentralization and reliability. You can still fork a layer two network and grab certain market share, but it is very difficult to fork Chainlink and replicate their years of stability. They have survived the entire DeFi crates and the 2021 bull run with their infrastructure never going down. That's something you cannot replicate anymore. That is why Chainlink is in a unique position to expand out to these horizontal use cases like enterprise, like RWA tokenization, like VRF for casinos. That's why I think in this next cycle, if you're going to build any application on top of Ethereum, Ethereum's technology, even if you're building on layer twos or even layer threes later on, you still have to use Chainlink and you won't have many other choices. And that's why I think Chainlink deserves to be in the top 10 coin ranking. Coming back to the market cap targets, being a top 10 coin will give Chainlink at least a $70 billion of market cap, judging by previous cycle. With a supply of 700 million tokens by the end of 2025 and a market cap target of 70 billion, that gives us $100 per link token by the end of 2025. Some people will say this is too high because Chainlink's previous all-time high is only $50. However, However, I would like to argue that Chainlink actually underperformed in the 2021 bull market because Chainlink really had a early bull run being in DeFi summer of 2020. So it had its run up way earlier and peaked out in May of 2021, but didn't have a new high when the Bitcoin even made a new high by the November 2021 peak. Chainlink just kept building their core infrastructure and onboarding more and more applications. They didn't pivot to a layer one or a metaverse project like so many others did. That's why I think $100 is really a more conservative target for myself personally. I think Chainlink will most likely revisit its all-time high and get way past that. And I think $100 is to be expected. Now for a super optimistic scenario, I think Chainlink could even reach $250. Here's my calculation. This is the chart of Chainlink's market dominance versus the entire crypto market cap. And you see at the DeFi run peak, Chainlink's dominance peaked at over 1.7% of the entire crypto market cap. This run up was due to Chainlink's dominance in DeFi summer being the core infrastructure provider powering everything. Now, fast forward to the 2025 run. If Chainlink can dominate multiple sectors, such as another DeFi run, or perpetual exchanges, all everyone trading on chain, or tokenization and RWA's enterprise adoption coming from BlackRock and JP Morgan and Wall Street, or even sectors like AI combining off-chain compute with on-chain smart contracts using the Chainlink automation and functions, I think that's all possible. If Chainlink can dominate two or even three unique sectors, I think it can reach these previous all-time high dominance levels and remain there for the 2025 run. If this is 
the case, and assuming that the total crypto market cap reaches the expected $10 trillion, that gives Chainlink a $170 billion in market cap by the 2025 bull run peak. Dividing $170 billion by the supply of $707 million, that gives us $240 per link. This is my super optimistic target for Chainlink by the next cycle top. And this can only happen if Chainlink becomes a top five coin, which will be super competitive. There are many strong projects competing for about three spots only after Bitcoin and Ethereum. That's why I think it's possible for Chainlink to reach $240, but it's not that likely. Okay, there you have it. My price prediction for Chainlink by the 2025 bull run peak is between $100 as the conservative target to $240 as the super optimistic target. Do you think these numbers are too high? I know some people think so, but hopefully today's deep dive research might have changed your mind and really given you my insights on how I am bullish on Chainlink and why. I think Chainlink's unique moat around powering all decentralized applications as the middleware layer that you must use is becoming super clear in this next cycle. Everyone is sick and tired of new layer ones and layer two infrastructure. And unless Unless you are Ethereum, you still can be replaced. That's why I think Chainlink being the middleware layer that cannot be replaced with its stability and decentralization that's proven over the years will finally start to shine this cycle. Okay, that's it for today's video. If you like this content, make sure to follow me on Twitter at virtualbacon0x. Also check out our newsletter on virtualbacon.com and join our free Discord, discord.gg slash virtualbacon. You can find all the links down in the description. Our Discord is completely free. We have trade setups and altcoin alerts from myself and our analysts. And make sure you join the discussion to not miss any new updates. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.